Hey, Jack, why don't you uh, tell us about the uh, first time you got to meet Mr. McNeese? Well, we were assigned to regimental headquarters because they were setting up the 506. And uh, one of our buddies, Malcolm, never forgets the time he first seen Jake and reminded me, here comes this guy down, down the road with two guards on him, peas on his legs and pee on his back. Who's that? That's McNeese, later known as McNasty. But well, that's him. So that was my introduction to Jake. And uh, that was a beginning of a long, long story between us. So that's about my introduction to Mr. McNasty. As a prisoner. Uh, yeah. Now, he was pretty much full of pranks and always had something going on. Now, you guys did some uh, demolition charges out, blowing out some stumps to clear out a lake for a swimming hole. Uh, what did you run into there? Well, uh, one of his antics was uh, when we got to North Carolina after our training and jump training, no, we went. Our officer wasn't too well liked, but he volunteered us for fire spires and blowing stumps out of the lake. And... Uh, we were out there in March in our shorts. It was pretty cold. We had an old raft and we'd push the stuff out and get nitro starch under these stumps. And of course, the signal is firing a whole demolition man. And bam, up goes these stumps. And what the heck is that? Snakes flying all over the place, cotton mouse. So I look at him and there's his eyes. Looks like ears going on. And what's he up to next? You know, so. He says, get two stumps ready. Here he spotted a whole glider detachment double timing down the road. And the wind was blowing, of course, so ready, firing a hole, balloon, and up goes the two stumps and the cotton mouse is a big spray of water going over these guys. If they ever caught us, they'd have killed us. There's only about eight of us, but uh, that's part of the training for these people. We taught them what they might be involved with, but not cotton mouths, because we didn't know where we were going at that time. But that's some of the things this guy got us into. So, now and Jack, many more. Now, Jack, you had mentioned that uh, you, when you guys ran Curahy a good bit, you got you got a good view of Jake. Uh, when you guys were running Curahy, where was Jake usually? Well, he was out of front. I couldn't understand how that guy, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, that was before he got in the stockade. So after this uh, affair in Tacoa and tangled with the MPs and all, they, we referred them to as rejects because they couldn't make our physical or, or requirements and the only place we could put them was in the MP detachment so they had us in for us anyway but anyhow Jake and these guys ended up in the stockade and uh, we at the bottom of the mountain is this stockade so we're running our, uh, the mountain every day three miles up three miles high 13 feet up and by the time we got we we're really dragging and here's these guys laughing at us. We're breaking their took us, and they're in the stockade having a ball. So, uh, you know, that, that's the way this guy thought, you know. So I think he had it all planned ahead of time. But that's that's part of the story that you you find the prisoners in the movie, the the Dirty Dozen. But uh, we weren't murderers or nothing. We just didn't do everything we were supposed to do, and done a lot more uh, than they wanted us to do. So we were always in trouble, and uh, thanks to Jake, I never went to town. <laughs> I never went to town with him because I knew I'd end up in jail. <laughs> and he was uh, always our acting sergeant until he went to town. And then his stripes come off, and as soon as we get into uh, some kind of activity, back on they go and act in charge again. So that's my introduction to Mr. McNasty.